Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great Player. Well, today's episode is kind of inspired by one of our Patreons who sent in the question, how do you make your character just a little bit different and stand out from the rest, especially if, they're being, if they are a conventional race? The example he gave was, say, the Drow, who are typically seen as being evil characters. What if you were to play a good character? Or, furthering that analogy, the uh, example, uh, if the Drow is not a rogue who runs around backstabbing people or a two-sword-wielding psychopath, what if the Drow is a bard who's more interested in cooking than they are in killing? So today we look at fleshing out and developing your character and we're going to look at three areas that you can use to help mold your character into being just a little bit more unique. The first area that we're going to look at is the actual character's physicality. So when you're portraying your character, and there are several videos on how to use descriptive words about your character, and none of us are great actors, or if we are, well, that's great. Most of us, however, aren't. So how do we use characteristics, physical characteristics, to make our character slightly different? Well, we have to identify what those are, first of all. And the very best place to start is to think of your character in a physical sense. Now, this can be difficult, or maybe it's easy for you. It just depends. What I like to do, once I've created my character, is I've got this idea in my head, I've got this backstory that they've been on, and then I try and, well, I close my eyes because that helps me focus, and then I think, what does this person look like physically? What is it about them? Do they have a hunch? Do they maybe have an uneven shoulder alignment? Does their jaw stick out and so they have this funny sort of accent? Or perhaps they have a funny eye? Perhaps they don't have any of that. Maybe they walk with a limp. So when they walk, they have this funny limp. Uh, perhaps they have a tendency to twirl their beard whenever they're thinking deep thoughts. Or perhaps they have a tendency to rub their hair when they haven't got a clue on what to do. That's something that you need to think about. Does every character need to have a quirk? No, not necessarily. But the physical quirk is something that you can bring to the table and have fun doing. What if every time your character came up with a cunning plan, he'd smooch down his moustache and go, I have a cunning plan, and I think you'll like it, yes. That's something physical that you can do at the table, and it will certainly make your character feel much more alive. Well, because there's something that the guys know. Whenever you're doing something like this, something is afoot, and your character is going to be right in the middle of it. So we could also look at, perhaps, accents. As the question was asked and pointed out, we often think of dwarves as being Scottish and running around in mines looking for gold, 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 and, well, just maybe a wee smattering more of gold. But what if your dwarf is not Scottish? What if he's weird sort of Romanian person and he has this funny guttural sounding voice? Maybe he speaks squeaky, more like gnome and less like, you know, heavy set dwarf. Maybe that is something that you can look into. If it is not too stressful on your throat to make this noise every time you're talking. And if your fellow players don't want to smash you in the face for the irritating sounds you keep making every time you start talking. Maybe you quite <laughs> want to challenge the accent set. Um, maybe you want to chat to your GM and say, well... <sighs> I know I'm playing a dwarf, but what if I came from a race of, or a clan of dwarves who shaved off all their beards, or shaved off all their hair for that matter, because they saw it as being a link to the old dwarvish ways and they refused to accept them. They're more cosmopolitan, or they're cannibals, or pick a reason, find one, add it to your character, and suddenly you've got this flavoursome character. So physical traits can be really powerful in terms of allowing you to make small gestures and come up with some really great visual cues for the rest of the players at the table and for your GM. 
The second area that you can look into in terms of making your character different is personality. So a lot of the games require you to have flaws and um, ideologies and thought patterns or world views or alignments. Here is somewhere that you can really challenge the status quo, especially in games like Dungeons and Dragons, where most creatures have got almost fixed alignments. Elves are always arrogant and haughty. Well, what if they're not? What if they're just plain curious? And they just can't wait to meet you because you seem like a very interesting person. Yeah, I've been around for 200 years, but I mean, what's 200 years? I've got plenty more to go and I haven't seen half the world. I'm really interested. Oh, did I tell you that I'm apt to make rash decisions? Because, you know, I kind of want to get on with life and this whole elvish idea of sitting back and doing sweet bugger all, that just drives me mad. You know what I'm saying? I mean, come on, let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. Let's move. That's a very friendly, outgoing elf who's very different from the usual archetype elf who's aloof and superior and has no need to rush for there are centuries in which we might act. There says that elf character and what a character he is. What about the dwarf who just wants to sing all the time? He might be Scottish, but perhaps... He occasionally likes to break out into great big bouts of opera where he can run around on the battlefield singing his favourite songs to his love and... Well, you get the idea. So personality-wise, you can really play with what we expect. Alternatively, what you can do is, if you're really sneaky, is that you have your character who adopts the national kind of mindset, but secretly in moments when they think they're alone or when they think they're not being watched, there are suddenly these very different people. What if it is this very dapper and logical Vulcan? But on occasion, when no one is watching, they go into the holodeck and play in a rock band because it might be illogical. However, the notation of the music is something to be admired and something to be understood as it might provide insight into just how heavy the metal can be. A small quirk of the personality can sometimes make a character stand out far more than a physical trait or some kind of limp. Finally, the last area that you can look into is the spiritual side of the character. Now, these are all things that we as humans have wrapped up and wrapped around us in great big boxes of paradoxes and hypocrisies and all those kind of wonderful izzies and things. So bring them to your character and your character will feel more real. Spiritually, I'm not necessarily talking about a character who worships a god. If it's a fantasy campaign where gods physically manifest themselves from time to time and provide priests with power, it's pretty difficult to be an atheist in the face of that kind of evidence. So believing in a god makes sense. But perhaps your character doesn't have to be a priest or a paladin or anyone who actually worships them. But after every adventure, or after every kill, they go over to the corpse of one of their slain and they say a small prayer to their god for keeping them safe. That's perfectly acceptable. And if you do it enough times, it starts to become routine and the your rest of your players will pick up that your character is quite pious and believes in deities and takes it seriously. Again, it's just adding flavour to your character. On the other hand, perhaps your character is definitely against religion and doesn't believe in higher powers, regardless of what the evidence might be. How did they get like that and why do they stick to that approach? Well, those are questions that you can answer and that makes your character that much more interesting because there is no necessarily right or wrong answer. It just is. Spiritually, you can also look at how your character treats others. Although your personality might be bubbly, they might very well see others as cattle, in which case, as much as they might be curious in them, it is a kind of distanced curiosity that one has when driving in a car and looking out over a field of cows and wondering just what they do all day. Clearly, it's nothing productive apart from eat, sleep and, well, produce methane. So maybe that's their spiritual approach to other beings. Perhaps they worship other beings and can't possibly hurt anyone. Imagine having a fighter who doesn't have any physical problems, doesn't have any kind of weird personality quirks, but simply won't kill anybody. He may knock them out, he may disable them, he may tie them up, but he won't actually commit the killing blow. 
does he necessarily stop others from killing them? Well, maybe he does and maybe he doesn't. Maybe he just doesn't want to be present during the uh, killing of the bound and gagged and completely helpless creature or individual. Either way, that's an interesting spiritual approach to life. Perhaps he likes to collect flowers in his spare time, and then those flowers he likes to take the seeds and grow them, and then he gives those flowers as symbols of his, well, ever-growing enjoyment and love of the person he's giving the flower to. There's an interesting balance between a personality quirk and, well, a spiritual quirk too. So it's really about looking at your character from those three spheres and saying, well, which ones can I enhance? Obviously, your character can have them in all of the different spheres, but if you try and bring them all to the table at once, you end up with a trick and a nervous little sounding dwarf who likes to cut people's heads off and wear their skin because, well, that's just the type of person he is. Ha! No, you don't have to go that far. It's about exploring and discovering and adding on as you go. And then, then the important thing, and I think a lot of people forget this, is that once you've been playing for a couple of weeks, you're going to start to learn what you as the player like. All of this premeditation is fantastic. But over time, you might say, well, yeah, I thought that was going to be a good idea. And I thought that represented the character, but well, maybe it doesn't. You can't just drop it. That would be weird. So you start to add it as a quest. My character really doesn't like the fact that his jaw sticks out all the way in front of him and causes him to have this funny sort of lisping sound. So he's going to go on a quest where he can find some kind of priest who can, perhaps using magic, cause his jaw to move back into the right place. And from there he starts to develop a love of singing, or of poetry, or of yodeling. The point is, is your characters should grow their things within those spheres, their attributes within those three spheres, should change and should evolve and should adapt. Not overnight, but over the course of the campaign. That'll keep it real and that'll make it interesting for you. Well, I hope this has been helpful on looking at different ways of making your character just that much more unique. If it is, hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Remember, you can always join us on www.greatgamemaster.com where you can list questions that you might want me to cover in future videos. You can, of course, leave that down below in comments as well. And uh, we're having some very interesting conversations on all manner of uh, videos. And I love every single moment of it. And I thank you for joining me. Of course, a big thank you to our Patreons who are supporting us. And you guys are coming in thick and fast, which is fantastic. And uh, yes, great things are planned for the future. So until next time, I wish you and your character the very happiest of playing. Thank you.